Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Niall Jagan, as I've been introduced. Thank you very much. I'm the global marketing manager responsible for young animal nutrition uh, in VOLAC. Uh, I'm really pleased to have the opportunity to share with you the, um, the new in initiative we have, Feed for Growth, but more importantly, why we think it's really important to have this sort of program together and what's happening in the marketplace that we need to respond to in order to help us all build successful, sustainable, profitable businesses of the future. So, what's happening? Um, as a business, we're seeing enormous changes happening in our sector, and they're happening on many different levels. Uh, from a farmer perspective, we're beginning to see farmers receive and consume information about their businesses, about their profession from all over the world. They're very comfortable, very open-minded around how to look at best practice and how to bring that home to their own farm. We're also seeing a new generation of farmer come through. They're not just following their parents into the business, they are being educated in a different way and that's bringing a new dynamic into the sector around how we take this sector forwards. On top of that, farms themselves are changing. We're seeing uh, much bigger average herd sizes across the globe, uh, and that does fundamentally change how these businesses are, run, are being run. A 70 cow herd is run in a very different way to a 200 cow herd, and a 500 cow herd is run completely differently again. And we need to be in a position to be able to support those businesses and help those businesses thrive. We are going to understand a lot more about the impact of this milk feeding phase and the way that it sets up that animal for the rest of its life in terms of the quality of the production animal that she will become. Very, very exciting times. We all know where we are with regards to milk price. Um, we all are also aware of just how volatile that milk price can be nowadays. And a very personal opinion that I have is that volatility is not actually going to go away. We are now operating in a global marketplace and those dairy com commodities are subject to change based on global factors. For that reason, I think we really do need to look into how these businesses are built and we need to build businesses that are ready <laughs> and capable of dealing with these fluctuations in milk price and that's predominantly around cash flow. Uh, we are already seeing these businesses being evaluated. We're all trying to be more efficient. We're all trying to do a lot more with a lot less. And we're all evaluating these inputs and maximizing the outputs. And it's our responsibility as a leader in this marketplace to help farmers do a better job on that, on that side. And I believe that calf rearing and calf management is a fundamental input that we're still losing an awful lot of money in. And it's something that I think we can improve. So in terms of what we're trying to achieve as a business, we, the business started with and still has at the heart of it young animal nutrition. We've been in the milk replacer business for over 40 years now. Uh, and we are seeing an opportunity to really champion the importance of the calf. It's a great time, and I think we are entering a golden era when it comes to calf management. They are the building blocks of our business, and actually success for us looks like an, a, an approach or an attitude to calf milk, uh, milk feeding being as important as success in colostrum feeding. I see them as exactly the same. I think they're as, as important as each other, uh, and Mike will begin to kind of explain just why I feel so strongly about that as well. I am completely aware that farmers are bombarded with information telling them that they should invest more in particular areas or do a better job in another area, but I do genuinely believe that this area of the dairy business is fundamental to the long-term success of that dairy business, and that's why I think we really should concentrate on it today. So introducing Feed for Growth. Feed for Growth, very, very simply, is our education platform. It's a collection of tools, advice, calculations, uh, just designed to make the most of this milk feeding phase. We've, we've packaged up our expertise into a series of materials that will help people make the most of this period of time. 
it isn't just about feeding more milk. So I'll show you in a, in a while our growth triangle, but it is a combination of health, nutrition, um, and the environment in which you put the calf in if you're to expect that calf to thrive. And it isn't rocket science, but again, I'd say my experience around the world is we're still making basic errors in this period of time. And we need to eradicate those errors if we're to really maximize this period of time and get the most value out of, these, out of our animals. We've put together something called a heifer roadmap, um, which will take us through to getting these calves calving down within the, the targets that we set. We also, based on how farmers consume information now, our, our information is both available physically and digitally. We want farmers to access this information when they want it, how they want it. And we use age at first calving as our measure for calf rearing success. The smaller that number, the more efficient we're being in terms of rearing these these replacement animals. And as Mike will share with you later on, it seems that the, there is no downside to doing that as quickly as possible. What I'd like to do now is share with you a couple of slides from our Feed for Growth material, just talking about why it's so important that we concentrate on rearing these animals as efficiently as possible. Um, we start with looking at how long it takes for that animal to pay you back in terms of financially. Looking at the difference between age at first calving at 30 months, the national average is around 28 or 29 here. I know there's big variation in there, but the difference between her calving down at 30 months and her calving down at 24 months is the 30-month animal won't break even until into the third lactation. 24 months and she's breaking even halfway through the second lactation. That is a big difference, especially when you look at the whole lifetime of the animal. Again, this information is from the national milk records. Average lifespan from that data set is um, six years. And when we look at those numbers, the difference is 10 months of positive contribution per animal. That is, that is a lot of money. However, even more importantly than that is the quality of the production animal that you'll actually get at the end of that rearing process. And this is what I'm going to show you now. This is information generated by um, Jessica Cook in her PhD, where she tracked 500 calves for five years and she then looked at the performance of those animals um, based on their age at first calving. And what we see are some really significant differences. One, the, the animals calving down between 23 and 25 months were significantly more fertile. That's 20 days difference between the next, the next group. They delivered 2,000 more kilograms than the group, the group following. And probably, as importantly, they stayed in the herd longer. So 70% of those animals were still in, still in the herd at lactation 3 versus less than 60 and actually 50% of those animals that were calving down after 30 months or in excess of 30 months. So we're talking about fundamentally better production animals based on age at first calving. It's not just about the individual animal either. Like I said, we're trying to use, we're trying to produce more with less. This is a calculation looking at the number of replacements that you need in your business. The difference is, and this is per 100 cows, guys, so the, the herd calving down at 24 months needs 13 less heifers per 100 cows as a replacement versus the herd that's calving down at 30 months. That is an enormous amount of space, time, and money being tied up, um, clogging up that business, not allowing that business to be as efficient as it possibly can be. So, concentrating on age at first calving helps us not only in terms of the quality of the production animal that we'll get, driving our business forwards, 
but also our ability to utilise the resources that we have on that farm. It's incredibly important. And those first three months, again, I refer back to what we're going to hear later on in the conference, are absolutely fundamental in terms of being successful in rearing these calves. And it's, a, it's an area that we can generate an awful lot of value from. This is the heifer roadmap I described before. And in essence, it's a series of milestones that we need to hit if we're to be confident that these, these heifers are carving down where we want them to carve down. First step <coughs> is at weaning. We're asking you to double the birth weight of these calves and doubling as a minimum. Not as a, not as a well-to-do or a success, but as a minimum. This heifer roadmap is built on percentage of mature body weight and time. And that's really important because it means we can create a heifer roadmap for, for yourselves from your farm data, and that's available to you online. Um, but also it means that when we get to 55 to 60% of mature body weight, that heifer is ready to be bred. So don't, don't wait for time, actually wait for the combination of mature body weight and time as well. And we shouldn't be afraid of breeding her early if she's at that, at that target weight. There is no downsides for breeding these animals early if, there are, if they are at the right target weight. After that, once she's in, once she's, uh, in, heifer, in calf, it's a question of managing her condition and hitting a target mature body weight of around 85% mature body weight. That's our heifer roadmap, and we do have calculators available to help produce that for yourselves. The point we're trying to make here is we really do need to know where these animals are if we're to be able to assess whether we are on track or not. And I know it's, uh, it's more data capture, but it really does make a difference in terms of measuring success in, re in rearing these replacements. Here's our growth triangle. <coughs> our information is organized around this triangle. Um, and we also have tools available to help record where we are with, uh, in the herd with these calves as well. I've mentioned Feed for Growth. It's available. It's live now, feedforgrowth.com. We have our information organized in a calf <coughs> barn. Here are the sides. Of the, um, of the growth triangle, and in essence, you will be able to download lots of information in the form of these farmer guides about key issues around these sides of the growth triangle. And here is the heifer roadmap calculator as well. So, um, in terms of future developments, like I said, Feed for Growth is our educational platform. We intend to um, keep it going. It's a living thing for us. We will develop more farmer guides uh, when they're necessary. We have a new Yoni's uh, farmer guide in development that's going to be available very soon. We're also looking at tools to help farmers record data on farm as easy as possible. So we're developing an app to support our, um, our microsite to help farmers record calf weights, uh, calf side in their farm and record that data and we report where you are with regards to your heifer roadmap. So we're hoping that will be available early next year. So I hope that's been interesting and informative. I really do believe that the benefits in investing in our calves and investing in how we manage our calves really does have lifetime benefits. I think if we're honest, we've probably massively underestimated the importance of the calf in recent years, but fair play to farmers, being open-minded, we're seeing radical changes in the way that we feed calves, the way that we manage calves, and I hope to see that continue. I think we are entering a marketplace where this volatility isn't going away, so we really do need to build robust businesses to be able to deal with those fluctuations. And like I said, I think we are 
really just scratching the surface of what we know about the calf and what we know about this milk feeding phase. But I think we are developing that knowledge very rapidly. And I, for one, am very excited to be part of that journey. So thank you very much for your attention today. Um, please enjoy the rest of the conference. Uh, and thank you again. Uh, enjoy your day. <laughs>